All right, welcome back everyone. We are continuing to talk about supply network planning problems. Uh, in the previous tutorial session, I would introduced two transportation and transshipment problems. The first one was a simple balanced transportation problem where you simply had supply nodes and demand nodes and the de demand and supply were balanced. So there was really no problem in using solver to um, to create a solution for us. The second scenario that we talked about was a balanced transshipment problem where we introduced a couple of transshipment nodes between the source and demand nodes. Uh, but even in this case, there was a balance between the supply and demand. And the other thing was that those transshipment nodes did not really have any demand of their own. So in this tutorial session, we are taking that example a little forward, and I'm going to talk about unbalanced transshipment problems, which is the last and final type of problem I'm going to talk about in transportation and transshipment. And you are going to use this example to, uh, uh, to solve for your last question in your assignment. Uh, also, after that, I'm going to show you how to use Solver for optimum facility location. Um, I've already posted the Excel spreadsheet for that uh, as part of your tutorial number one. Uh, if you look at the Centroid um, spreadsheet, it has two uh, worksheets in it. The second worksheet actually has a solution using Solver for facility location, but I will go over it very briefly with you at the end of this tutorial. Um, so if you recall, this was one of the slides I showed you in the previous tutorial session, and I asked you to tell me anything uh, peculiar about this network diagram. A few things to notice here, if you uh, were able to notice these things from the last slide set. Uh, in this case, we have two transshipment points at Sacramento and Chicago. Uh, and what's different about these transshipment points is that they have their own demand. So Sacramento has a demand of 25 or 25,000, whatever the denomination is. Um, and Chicago has a demand of 47. Um, so these transshipment points have their own demand. Uh, also, another thing to notice here is if you add up the total supply out of Sunnyvale, Dublin, uh, Dublin and Bangkok, uh, and compare that to the demand at your transshipment points and your demand points, if you add that up, then the supply and demand do not balance. The supply in this case comes out to 260. Uh, and the demand, including your transshipment points and your demand points, comes out to 285. So there's a difference of 25 units. So one of these nodes is going to be short by 25 units. And we need to find out which node that's going to be as part of our solution. Uh, the third thing to notice about the network is that um, not all routes are possible in the network. Um, so Sunnyvale, for example, can supply directly to Amarillo. Um, it can supply to Sacramento and Chicago, whereas the other two plants in Dublin and Bangkok can only supply to those transshipment points and not directly uh, to any of the demand nodes. Um, also, if you look at your transshipment points, then Sacramento, for example, can only supply to Amarillo and Sioux Falls, uh, but Chicago can supply to all three demand points. So there are some routes which are not shown to you, and you are to assume that those routes don't exist or they're prohibited and you need to take that into account when you formulate your solution. Uh, so we talked about these variations a little bit in the last tutorial, um, where the total supply is not equal to total demand, and there are some unacceptable and prohibited routes that we need to incorporate into our solution. Um, I also briefly mentioned how you can go about solving a problem where uh, the supply is not equal to demand and there are some unacceptable prohibited routes. Uh, for unacceptable or prohibited routes, the solution is very simple. You just assign an arbitrarily high cost to those routes so that Solver does not use them uh, when it creates a solution for us. Uh, where the demand is greater than supply, um, this was one of the slides I put up last time, uh, and the idea here is when the demand is more than the supply, then one of the things we can do um, is use a dummy supply node um, and the supply that's going to be possible out of that dummy node is going to be just the difference between the demand and supply. In this case, it's going to be 25 units. So we are going to use this dummy node to supply 25 units somewhere in our network. And whichever demand node gets those 25 units will know that that is the demand node which is going to fall short um, if this problem uh, existed. 
Uh, also, uh, one of the things to, to notice here is that the dummy node is going to be assigned a cost of zero for every destination node that it's going to go to. So our overall total cost solution is not going to be affected. So we are trying to minimize our cost. And since this dummy node has a cost of zero to supply to any of the demand nodes, our overall cost will be zero. So with this information in mind, we are going to go into Excel and um, solve for our network problem. So just to, again, go back to the network diagram, this is the information that we need to put into Excel and formulate our model, uh, formulate our constraints. Some of our constraints are going to be exactly the same as they were in our previous examples, like your supply nodes cannot supply more than their capacities. Um, the, the demand at all of your demand nodes needs to be satisfied. Um, also, in terms of your transshipment points, where in the previous example we said that the inflows and outflows should be equal, in this case, that's going to be a little different. We are going to formulate our constraints such that the inflows minus the outflows is equal to the demand for that node. So whatever's coming into that node minus whatever's leaving that node should be equal to the demand at that node. Um, so that's one of the differences in the formulation of this problem. Uh, and additionally, we're going to also have a dummy node, like I said, uh, and that dummy node is going to supply to one of these demand nodes. Um, or one of these five demand nodes in our problem, which includes um, the final destination nodes as well as the transshipment point nodes. So with that in mind, uh, let's go into Excel and uh, see how to go about solving this problem. So one of the first things I'm going to do is to add that dummy node to our existing data so that we know exactly what role this dummy node will play. Uh, and again, we're, this dummy node can only supply the 25 units that we're going to be short somewhere, either in our transshipment points or in our uh, final demand points. Um, so first, let's just uh, look at the difference between the supply and demand. So I'm just going to note that difference over here. So the total supply is simply the sum of all of the supply capacities from the three plants which is 260 in this case. And the total demand is the sum of all the demand requirements at the transshipment points as well as at the demand points, which is 285. So the difference between those two is 25. And that is how much our dummy node is going to need to supply. So I'm just going to create another row in my data for the dummy node. Again, remember that the dummy node should be able to supply to any of the demand points at a cost of zero, because we do not want the dummy node uh, cost to affect our total cost function. So we'll add zeros to all the demand points. And again, demand points in this case also include the transshipment points, because there is some demand at those points. Um, the other routes which we do not want to show uh, in our case, again, I'm just going to add uh, 100,000 as uh, a cost for those routes. So this is now uh, an additional uh, supply point for me, which is going to supply, be able to supply 25 units somewhere, uh, either in the transshipment points or at the demand points. I'm just going to color it differently so that we know uh, that this is a dummy node. All right, so with that, let's uh, copy over our entire table into our model. So I'm just going to, I've just copied over the exact same thing into our model. And for the model, again, we're not going to have the cost information. Instead, we're going to have our flows, which solver should fill in for us. Um, and the last column is not going to have the demand capacity or the demand requirements, but the inflows, uh, or sorry, the, the outflows from each of the points. So uh, the outflows from Sunnyvale, the outflows from Dublin, Bangkok, etc., should all be here. So this is just simply the sum of each row. So I'm going to have that for all of my rows, including the dummy node, because the dummy node is going to have some outflows. Um, 
let's just shave this back uh, to the original. Uh, and uh, at the bottom of every column, you need to have your inflows. So I will have my inflows, which is simply the sum of everything that's coming into that node. So which is the sum of the column itself. All right, so I do that for all of my columns. And with that, our uh, model is pretty much set up. Uh, again, if you remember, we need to uh, use different types of constraints. And for those constraints, I'm going to, uh, again, shade my cells a little differently to make things easier and more uh, readable for myself. Um, so for my outflows, which need to be lesser than um, the supply capacity at my plants, I'm going to leave them as green. Uh, again, I'm going to uh, just color my transshipment points differently. And I'm going to color my three demand points differently as well to match the color scheme that I'm using in my data. Uh, same thing over here. I'm just going to color my cells uh, for the inflows using the same color scheme that I'm using. And again, this is just for readability purposes. You don't need to do this, but it's just mainly for readability so that we know that um, the inflows are uh, for the uh, transshipment points and uh, the demand points. Uh, there should be no inflows for your uh, plants at all. Um, also, uh, for our transshipment points, we need our net inflows, uh, so which is equal to the inflows minus outflows because our Transshipment points also have their own demand. So whatever's coming into the transshipment points minus whatever's leaving those transshipment points should be equal uh, to 25 and should be equal to 47 for Chicago. Uh, so I'm just going to have that information over here. So I'll just call this uh, net inflow to transshipment points. And that simply is, for Sacramento, for example, that's going to be equal to the inflow minus the outflow for Sacramento. Same thing for Chicago, inflow for Chicago minus the outflow for Chicago. All right, so that, again, only applies to my transshipment points. I'm just going to color it as such. All right, so with that, we are pretty much set for our model diagram. Again, these are the cells that we want Excel Solver to fill for us. So I'll shade these differently as well. Again, using our standard color scheme, I'm going to shade them uh, some version of red so that we know that these are cells that need to be filled by Excel. Uh, and lastly, we just need to formulate our objective function, which is the total cost, which is simply equal to the sum product. Again, you should know this by now. It's going to be equal to the sum product of the flows, which Excel is going to fill for you. Again, make sure that you are including the dummy row as well. Uh, and the second array is your cost array. Again, include the dummy row in your cost array as well. So that is your total cost function. And this is the objective function that we're trying to minimize in our case. All right, so we're ready to use Solver now. Uh, and just to review, what we're going to do in Solver is we're going to try to minimize our total cost, making sure that uh, the total outflows from our supply points are lesser than uh, or equal to the supply capacities for those supply